Hey, how's it guys? In this video, I'm going to show you how to perform RFM analysis in SQL. So if you've never done a RFM analysis, RFM stands for Recency, Frequency, and Monetary. And it's a pretty uh, popular analysis in the uh, marketing field that it allows you to uh, quantitatively rank and group customers based on these three uh, metrics. Now let's look at the definition of uh, RFM. So R stands for recency, which is how recent a customer made a purchase. And frequency means that how often does a customer makes a purchase. And finally, monetary means that how much money does a customer spend on the uh, business. So that's the concept of RF analysis, which is to give you a tool to uh, filter your customers based on these three criteria. All right, so let's look at how we can do uh, the analysis in SQL. For this analysis, I'll be using SQL Server, but you can use any other uh, database systems such as MySQL, uh, Postgres, or even Microsoft Access. All right, so here, let uh, me do a, a preview of the data set first. So here's the raw data I'll be using to uh, perform the analysis. All right, so we have uh, quite many columns. So here I already uh, knows the steps. All right, so for step one, we need to filter the data set. All right, so here I'm going to do a slash statement from the uh, table itself. And I name my table rfm uh, underscore data set. And let me come out uh, this line here. So from the analysis, we know we need to grab the uh, customer's list. In this case, it's going to be customer's ID. And to figure out the recency and frequency, we need to grab the customer's order uh, records. And it's going to be coming from order ID and order date. And finally, to figure out the sales, we can either use profit or we can use uh, sales. So it's all up to you and based on your use case. For this exercise, I'm going to use uh, sales. So from the master data set, I don't want to uh, do the analysis on every single customer. I want to filter my customer. So here I'm going to insert a word class. And I want to filter my data set by, uh, let's do segment. I only want to see the consumers and where the uh, customers are based in the United States. And we can determine a customer's location by referencing the country column. And the country is going to be in the United States. And it's going to be the data set that we're going to work with. And that gives us 5,191 records. And once we filter the data set, we need to assess the quality of the uh, data source. All right, so here, uh, let's do this. I want to, first of all, make sure that every single order ID are unique. So I'm going to convert my first uh, slash statement to a, a common table expression. And I'll name this as filter, let's just name this as data set. So here I'm going to select everything from the data set table. And here I'm going to uh, simply type the column name individually. All right, so here I'm going to create a window function uh, using the counts function. And I want to count by the order ID count. So basically this window function is going to give me the uh, total order count by customer, then by ID. All right, so here I want to type the uh, over class. And I want to partition my data set or the uh, aggregation by, let's do a uh, customer ID. 
followed by old ID. So based on the last column, uh, this number is going to tell me based on customer's ID and the order ID, how many instances of uh, these two combinations exist in my data set. And in this case, I can see that order ID appeared twice. And this order ID by uh, this customer also appeared twice. And this one appears four times. So by looking at uh, this assessment, I can see that my uh, record set basically is consists of the uh, line records uh, for each individual transactions. So in this case, I need to uh, group everything together to give me a summary that well any uh, duplicates. So let me come out uh, this select statement here. Now to summarize the uh, table, I'm going to create another uh, common table expression. And for uh, this table, I'm going to name this as order summary. Should we come out these two lines first? All right, so here I'm going to select everything from the data set. And I want to create a summary based on customer ID, order ID, and order date. So for uh, each order date, they should corresponding to uh, each order ID. We cannot have uh, two order IDs with two different order dates. And I want to aggregate everything by the sales column. So that gives me the summary based on the total sales per customer per order ID. And I'll name this as total sales. And because uh, this is an aggregation function, we need to group the data set by these three columns. And here, let me take out the uh, comma. All right, so we have the uh, real raw data set that we are going to be using to create the RFM analysis. And if I look at the uh, total records, I now have 2,586 rows. As I said before, we had about, let's see. So before we had about 5,191 rows. So the order summary table is going to give us uh, the two summarize uh, data set without any duplicate customer ID and order ID. All right, so I'm going to uh, name this table as order summary. Oh, let me delete that. Now to create the RFN analysis or RFN report, let me take a look. Here, let me put the uh, comma back. All right, so I'm going to retrieve the order summary table. That's the data set that I'm going to use to construct the report. So customer ID is going to be our key to uh, perform the summarization. Now going back to my uh, notes. So recent is going to be based on how recent was the customer's uh, last purchase. And to figure out the last time the customers uh, made a purchase. And because uh, this report is pretty old, so we cannot use today's dates. So in this case, I'm going to use the uh, latest report date. All right, so here, let's see the last report date. All right, so let me uh, pull my tool. So I'm going to insert the data set onto Excel. Now, if I saw the data set by order dates, here, let me zoom in a little bit more. All 
So I'll be using December 31st, 2014 as uh, today's date to calculate the recency. Now let's go to step four. All right, so first we need to uh, calculate the last order dates from this existing data set. All right, so I'm going to insert a subquery and it's going to be, gives me the maximum dates based on the order dates column. And the table is going to be from uh, step three, which is uh, order summary. Oh, and I forgot to uh, name this as T1. Now we need to figure out uh, the last time when a customer made a purchase. So I'm going to insert another uh, subquery and I'll name this column as last, actually, uh, max order date. And it's going to be, uh, I mean, the subquery is going to be pretty similar. Except uh, we need to do a join to group the uh, maximum order dates per each customer. So here I'm going to insert a where condition. And my condition is going to be from the order summaries uh, customer's ID column. I want to do a join against the T1 table. So we need to treat uh, these two uh, tables separately. And because these two tables have the exact uh, same table name, we need to differentiate uh, these two tables by assigning an alias to uh, the outer table. So we can say, uh, I want to return the maximum order dates where the customer ID is equals to customer ID from the outer table. And I'll name the column as maximum customer order date. All right, so if we look at the uh, table here, actually, let me insert two more columns. All right, so I'm going to include the order ID and the order date uh, in the data set as well. All right, so if we uh, just do a quick assessment or quick validation. Now looking at customer ID 10660, and based on this, uh, based on uh, this records, the last order dates based on this customer, based on all the uh, order ID, is going to be September twenty third, two thousand thirteen. Actually, I was incorrect. Uh, here, let me do this. Let me order the table. So I'm going to order the table by customer ID first. Then I want to sort by order dates, and it's going to be the third column. And I want to uh, sort the data set in descending order on the order dates column. Oh, and this should be order by. Now, if we look at the records again for, uh, let's do uh, customer 10315. The latest order dates for uh, these customers should be on June 30, 2014. And for customer 10375, we should have uh, December 12, 2014 as the uh, latest order date. Now to calculate the uh, recency, we need to subtract max customer order dates by max order dates. I'm going to grab this line here and I'll just make a copy. All right, so to figure out the date difference, here I'm going to use the dates date function. I want to return the date difference. So the first argument is going to be the uh, starting date, and which is going to be max customer order dates. And we need to subtract by the uh, max order dates. And let me come out these two lines, uh, since I don't need it anymore. Right, so looking at this, I know uh, based on latest order dates from the data set, the last time this customer made a purchase was 184 days ago. 
and I'll name this count as uh, recency. All right, so we have the uh, recency calculator. Now we need to calculate the frequency. So recency is actually the most uh, difficult part when it comes to performing the analysis. And to calculate the frequency, we can simply count the total order by customer ID or by customers. And this will be order ID. And this will be uh, as frequency. No, actually. Yeah. And I'm going to name the count as uh, frequency. And to calculate the total uh, monetary value from a customer, we just need to sum the sales number. And it's going to be total sales. And it's going to be uh, monetary. All right, so here, uh, oh, uh, this should be only customer. All right, so we have uh, the recency and frequency and monetary uh, values calculated. Now we just need to assign a rating to uh, each value. So the rating is really based on the value of your customers and transactions. And because uh, this is such a small data set, so I'm going to use a rating of one, two, three to assign to uh, each customer based on these three uh, criteria. And to assign a rating between one, two, three uh, to each criteria, we can use the entire function. So basically, I'm assigning the value of one, two, three based on each number uh, fell into their own uh, percentage uh, tile based on uh, each list. So three means that I want to divide the uh, data set into three groups based on the uh, values. All right, so here we need to uh, insert the over class because uh, this is a window function. And the uh, uh, segregation is going to be based on the recency values. So I can simply grab uh, this line here. And it's going to be my uh, order by criteria. And I'll name this as R. So R stands for uh, recency. Oh, and the uh, uh, sorting order should be by descending order. Because uh, the more recent the value is, we should rank the uh, number higher. First for uh, frequency and uh, monetary value, we want the number to be bigger. So here let me copy uh, this code block here, or this portion from the statement. All right, so to assign the rating to the frequency, and it's going to be ordered by based on the frequency uh, value. And the uh, sorting criteria is going to be in ascending order. And it's going to be uh, F frequency. And for the uh, monetary rating, this is going to be based on the total sales. All right, so uh, this is going to be the entire uh, SQL script. Now, if I run the uh, SQL query, the SQL query is going to give us the RFM analysis report. So this is going to be uh, everything I'm going to show in this video. If you have any question, uh, feel free to leave your comment in the comment section below. And as always, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.